In this week's episode of Working with Todoist, it's Back to Basics Part 2, and we're talking about labels. Hello and welcome to this part two of my Back to Basics series of Working with Todoist. And in this week's part, we're going to talk about labels and how to get the most out of the labels fits for functionality that we have in Evernote. Now, one thing I should point out, Labels originally came from the Getting Things Done book by David Allen and if you haven't actually bought this book yet, why? Because this is the foundation of all modern productivity systems and one of the parts of the Getting Things Done book is context. Now in Todoist, contexts are essentially called labels and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to give each task a label of the place, the tool, or the person that is required in order to complete that task. Now that part is so important, I'm gonna repeat it. A label is a place, a person, or a tool that you need in order to complete a task. So let's take a very basic um, example. Let's say that you need to buy a birthday cake for your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or husband and in order to buy that cake you need to stop by the supermarket or the shopping mall or the bakery. So what you would do is you would add a label of say shopping if you have a label or groceries or whatever place you have to do. Now to be perfectly honest, I have a general one called errands and therefore whenever I'm in the town all I need to do is click on the label errands and it will tell me all the things that I need to buy. Another example of this might be that you need to call the doctor to make an appointment for your annual medical checkup. What you would do is you would say call doctor to arrange annual medical checkup, you'd add a label of calls because it's a telephone call. Maybe at the time that you make out that task, you don't have time to call the doctor at that moment, but as soon as you get a free moment or enough time, you click on your calls label and there enough you'll see amongst all your other calls, the call to call your doctor. And essentially that's how labels would work. Another one would be ask uh, my boss for or give my boss the vacation application form. Well, then you would have a label, my boss, and you would attach to that task the label, my boss. Essentially, that's how labels work. Now, the problem that we have is that we overcomplicate this and we end up with 20 or 30 labels. If you've already got 20 or 30 labels, you've got way too many labels because you really don't need that many. I've found that actually you only need round about 10 to 15 labels, any more than that, and you really are going a little bit overkill. So this is why I started this Back to Basic series. I wanted to get people to really get understanding of these principles of productivity and how to do is can really help you with these things. So let's get straight into this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the original GTD labels. Now some of these are a little bit out of date, I know, but what we can do is modify the labels to fit your lifestyle. And before we go any further, I really should point that out. Labels are really, really personal. What might work for me is not necessarily going to work for you. For some people, all they do is go to the office, do their work, go home, do their housework. They don't have any other places to go. So you really only need home, office, and maybe one or two others like calls and so on. But for people like me who have 
Although I do have an office, I rarely go there. I spend most of my time at my client's office. I can end up with quite a lot of labels depending on where I'm going to be. So labels are really, really personal. And the best advice I can give you is don't go and copy somebody else's labels because they look cool, because their labels work for them. Those labels are not necessarily going to work for you. So anyway, let's get into this. Oh, before we move on, don't forget to like this video if you like the video. And please guys, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. Just click on the little button down there. It really, really helps me. Thanks very much guys. Let's get straight into this. Okay, before we go into Evernote, uh, before we go into Evernote, before we go into Todoist, uh, what I want to do is show you uh, the original list that we that David Allen uh, produced. So this is, if you do have the book, by the way, and I believe this is actually in, this will be in the original um, GTD book because this is 2010. So if you have the 2015 version of the book, I think the page number will be different. But if you have, like me, the original book, then page 144 of the Getting Things Done book has lists, this list here as your suggested uh, labels or context. So this is a good starting area. Um, and essentially what we've got is agendas, anywhere, calls, computer, errand, home, office, waiting for, and then lists for projects and someday maybe. Now we don't worry about that for labels in Todoist, but these are the ones that really are the important ones. So let's go into Todoist, over that here. <clears throat> If you remember, these are the six um, goal. These are the six project folders that I suggested last week. Well, now we're moving into the labels section. So I've got these: calls, computer, office, home, agenda, errands, waiting for, internet, and anywhere. So in the calls, basically, you would have uh, tasks such as call Bob about using his garage for making frogs to make frogs and call party costumes about stocking for stocking our frogs. Now, one of the things that you can do, and now because you're gonna to have to do it on your mobile device, what I strongly recommend is you put Bob's number in here. So let's say 010, 8. So you put that in there, and essentially, although in the computers I'm showing you here, it doesn't actually have um, a uh, line underneath it on your mobile device all you would need to do is click on that and it will make the call for you so I strongly recommend for your calls make sure you put the telephone number in the actual task now of course you could and this is probably because I like to keep my task list looking neat and tidy what you could do is you can just add the number into your comments add that and then on a mobile device again all you would need to do is just click on that and it will come up as a clickable telephone number so that's another way of doing that if you wish so i've got here call party costumes about stocking our frog so essentially what happens is i've got a few minutes during the day and what i need to do is what can i do all i need to do is hit the labels uh, icon on my phone or on my computer and I can just go into okay what tools do I have with me I have my laptop and my phone so I can go into my computer and have a look at what things I've got in here now to be fair for me at computer I know it's likely to have uh, quite a lot of heavy work so continue writing history of the Labour Party book that's going to be quite a big task so maybe I'm not going to do that but these two figures here update sales report figures and update sales report um, well of course in these I might think oh yeah I've got 10 minutes I'll just update the sales report so again I just click on the label and there I am office I've got nothing in there home go out for a run now that's because I would be running when I'm at home take weight reading which is something I would do on a Friday while I'm at home go to the gym, I've got that home. Actually, that wouldn't necessarily be home. Go to the gym would actually be um, at anywhere, I guess. Um, but what I would probably do is, <laughs> you know why to do is it always seems to do that for me. You got to put this in at the end. So, uh, so what I would do is at and then anywhere. And what you'll find with to do is, by the way, it does simplify things and then you can click there 
and it's gone out of my home. Agenda. Now, agenda, what that means is people you need to talk to. So when you get to agenda, although this is the basic setup for the to -do is, uh, the GCD labels, what you would do is you click on there and, sorry, you'd add a label and I would put boss. So you've added that one and I'd add another one, wife. And then I would add a uh, sales team. So for example, those would, now you can't indent these, but what I would do is I would drag them up under the agenda and that you don't actually need agenda in. Um, I mean, you can do it, but what I would do is I would delete agenda and I would just have boss, wife, sales team. So anything I need to talk to my boss about, all I would need to do is just add the task in there. So that's very, very easy to do wife, etc., sales team. So you could add a quick task in here. By the way, if you'd add the plus, it will give you the label, uh, discuss new um, uh, sales reporting system. And the label's already attached into that. So that's one way of going into your labels and, and adding tasks related to that particular label. And then we've got errands, and errands could be anything like buy something from a particular store, uh, and waiting for now the waiting for one is something that you need to get into the habit of doing if you've sent an email out uh, that is really important and your need to get a reply then add the label all you need to do is just add the label to the task waiting for you don't actually have to remove anything so let's take for example it's going to here uh, update sales or go to the gym. <laughs> um, let's say I've got add five new Spanish words to my vo vocabulary list. I've spoken to Bob about it and now I want to put at waiting for. I add that in there and I save it. Now, when I go every day, you, you should make a task of going to look at your waiting for label. The reason you do this is then you're very much aware every day of what you are waiting for. Maybe you should get into the habit of doing this every morning or you might, I think morning is usually the best time because if you actually need it for tomorrow, at least you've got a few hours to be able to chase something that you're waiting for. And then of course we've got internet, things that you need to do on the internet and finally anywhere, which I've just said, you just go to the gym. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, the key to this, though, is to figure out your lifestyle. So, for example, I do quite a bit of work in the coffee shop, so I would add, I could add coffee shop. That would be one. So something that I would do in the coffee shop, uh, and usually I have my iPad. So actually, another label that I have, because I do quite a lot of writing, I actually have a label writing and I use that quite regularly. By the way, before we finish, I just noticed one thing. You can color code your labels by clicking on the, um, the label icon and you can change the color of these labels. All you do is click on edit, uh, go into there and you can just change the color to anything you want. So let's say I wanted to keep work-related stuff as red, so I'm gonna keep it as red and so on. You can change the color of your labels. Just wanted to mention that. Okay, thank you very much for watching this part two of working with Evernote's Back to Basics. Don't forget, join me next week in the third episode where we took, go through the filters and how to get the best use out of your filters. But in order to get the best use out of your filters, you need to actually get your labels sorted out. So, unusually, I'm going to give you some homework this week. What I want you to do this week is to pay close attention to the tools, the people and the places that you work at and to figure out what are the best labels for you so that when we do part three next week on filters, you will be ready to take the real you, make the maximum use out of filters for you. Okay, thanks very much for watching this episode. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please guys, please subscribe to the channel. It just remains for me to say, I wish you all a very, very, Productive week.